Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do in this process is cut out all the pieces I need to construct the mechanism. And that starts with poking a little holes uh, in my template. I poke four corners and each of the sephirot. And I use a template in order to get continuity between the pieces that I cut. Because without the template, um, the pieces are all just ever so slightly different. And that causes problems, especially the further along I go. Okay, there's all 14 holes poked, and let me just get some stuff. Okay, the very first one is going to be the face of the gate maker. This is the part that has the sephirotic discs and the path strips on it, the decorated part. And I do that on the uh, white card. Now this is the first because it's going to be the most exact. And this is what everybody sees, so being exact is good. Now, in doing this, you have to hold the paper down tight because it will tend to jump around with the poking of holes. So, the top to be sure to have it the right way up when it comes to putting it all together. Pencil just broke. It's a very soft pencil. Okay. That's number one. Now, I move on to cardboard. Okay. Now, there are several layers to building up the body of the gate maker. Body of the mechanism, rather. Okay. <clears throat> so.
Okay, there's the required word I will need. And do one more. Okay. This is the sheets that I size sheet I get my chipboard in. Okay, so these are what I will need. Okay, now what I need first is the very back of the mechanism. This is just Poke the four corners on this one. And again, I mark the top. Okay. Then we have two layers of filler, and these get marked with the or corners and the 10 sephra. So these are gonna have holes in them. Okay, the third piece here, uh, filler, I have to mark, once I mark all the saffron on here, I then have to draw the path lines and cut them a little bit so that I can insert my wires. That goes in number three filler. So I have two layers where the, uh, the sephirot are cut out, um, and then the layer of wire, and then a top layer on top of the wire. Okay. And 
the um, mechanism off with a layer of the chipboard. Mostly, well, for two reasons. Number one, it creates a good um, solid surface in which I glue the um, the decorative layer onto, and it adds just the right amount of thickness so that the um, the clear quartz spheres fit down below the surface far enough that it all works out. Okay, next up, got to go sharpen my pencil, and then I will draw in the path strips for the wire. Okay, now, this is the layer where I'm going to be cutting for the wire to go in. So I want to mark these lines that I'm going to cut first before I do anything else with this. And I always mark these in the creative sequence. From the very beginning, the first thing I do when I'm using my template to make all my little holes, I'm doing it in this, the sequence of the Sephiroth. So from the very beginning, my intention that each of these will represent a certain aspect of the tree is set in place. Everything I do follows this pattern. That is essential in making a gate maker. Making it work. Okay, now I double check to make sure I got everybody, and that's okay. That's what it looks like. Okay. Okie doke. Now, what I need to do is draw a bunch of little circles for all the holes that I'm going to have to cut out. There. 
Now, it's a matter of cutting them out, except for the face, the surface um, where all the past strips get glued. I am going to paint this gold. So I don't cut the circles out until after I've got the whole uh, uh, face uh, built, okay? So we're gonna set that one aside for now and focus on cutting all of these little lovelies. That's cutting a lot of holes. essentially plain. Um, it will get cut first. Now, at the top corner up here, I mark each of these pokey holes in this way so that when I cut and come back to this final cut here, I can still find that hole, okay? You have to be careful about those little things. basically three cuts for each line so that it cuts all the way through nice and evenly the outside and this is going to be a long and boring process for you so I probably won't show it all or at least it will be high speed
Okay, now cutting this one, I am going to be more careful in cutting these holes. You can see these are kind of rough, sort of in general, uh, but here I want to be more exact because when it comes time to make these cuts in the cardboard, having a clean circle makes it a lot easier. So we take the glasses off and we hunker down. Okay, there's the chipboard. Chipboard is very hard to cut. Uh, I had to cut three, four, five, six times to get it to go through all the way, especially towards the end. 
This is one very dull um, X-Acto blade by now. Um, and cutting circles, it's never good to start with a new blade because you end up breaking the tip of the blade. Straight lines you can do with a new blade, but never anything curved. Okay, so those are all my pieces for the body of the mechanism of the game maker. Now I'm going to set that one aside, the chip, um, the final face of it aside, and this uh, with the um, wire markings on it aside for now. And I'm going to glue these pieces. That's the first gluing. Okay, this is the first gluing of the gate maker. Now I'm going to glue these pieces together. Now, in order to do that, I've got to get to the back of these two pieces. Anytime you add glue to cardboard, it will warp. There's no getting around it. It's just a matter of how much is it going to warp. So, and you really don't need a whole lot of glue to get cardboard to stick together. So, I have learned over the years to use less and less glue whenever I can. And that will be enough to stick that piece to there. Okay, whoop. And the same on here. You want to get around the edges and around the Sephirot holes because this is where it's going to matter. Mm. size of the exacto knife on each of these lines and I will lay in the wire at that point so it needs to make a really good contact between these two layers um, because if I don't I will end up with little pieces of cardboard floating all over the place and it gets to be a real mess so I glue that sufficiently in this area and It'll be okay. 
doesn't matter as much around the edges because that will be held together um, by other bits that I put on here later. What matters is the area between the saffron because that's where I'm going to be cutting. Bottles getting old. I need to get a new one. <clears throat> Part of the reason I uh, use Elmer's glue, Elmer's glue wall. Um, is because it doesn't dry out on me while I'm working with it. Unless I'm working a, a real thin layer of glue, then it dries out pretty quickly. But when I'm doing something like this, I'm getting it on here thick enough that it's not gonna dry out on me. Jeez, okay. Within, you know, the time I'm working, Whoa, there we go. Okay, I've slopped enough glue on there. Now I will make sure that it's making good contact around the sephirot. Okay, in this area between the sephirot. This is starting to bow. It's starting to bulge here on the uh, upper side. The area that has the most moisture in it from the glue is the side that bulges outward. So that's good to know because you'll need to um, rotate things <laughs> so that they dry flatter. Now, I'm going to put some on here as well. Just as extra insurance. Okay, now we glue them together. Okay. Yeah, I got 
plenty of blue on there. Plenty, plenty. Now we even the edges up again. Make sure it all sits right. We want all of these sides to be as flat as possible when we are done. We want it to dry as flat as possible on the sides. Okay. Now, we again put some weight on there. Actually, take this more out of my way. on there oh. to make sure it stays as flat as possible now this is going to warp it just does there's no avoiding it when you put this much moisture in cardboard it warps um, the trick is to control the warping to make it warp less um, if I was to just glue it and then leave it in the open, it would create a bow. You know, even if you turned it upside down, it would still bow outward because of all that moisture in there. Um, it is going to be uh, slightly concave at the end, um, which is fine. Um, it's not so much as to distort it visually. Um, and this is taken care of the form ultimately will be flat and straight and will not have uh, a bow in it because um, I after this is all made the, the mechanism I box it in so when I box it in we get straight edges and flat and square etc okay next up is to check on the mechanism and see how it's doing. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we have just a slight bow. Not bad. Okay, now I am going to cut all of these lines. And to do that, I want a brand new blade because uh, you want to cut these rather delicately and you really want to go through only the top layer of cardboard so they're fairly shallow cuts because all it has to fit in there is a little 24 gauge wire so, okay so cutting all these Acid off for this. Okay, so I cut only in the very top layer of the card board. And again, I follow the creative sequence in cutting these paths.
Okay, all done. You can see that all the paths have been sliced through and this is ready to wire up, which will be the next thing I do with that. Okay. Okay, now I'm just going to glue them in the holes. Now these were rough cuts, they don't need to be exact at all. They're going to fit down inside and only a portion of them will be showing under the crystals. So we just dab a little glue, stick it in. put these in before I begin wiring because it's kind of difficult to get them in once the wires are there. So now I am going to wire the uh, mechanism. And this takes three different kinds of wire. Gold, silver, and copper wire. Now, all the paths that come from the middle pillar outwards or in the middle pillar um, continuous are copper wires. All the wires that come from the pillar of mercy, etc., are gold wires. And all the paths that come from the pillar of severity are silver wires. Okay? Okay. So, we start wiring. Now, how I do this is I roughly measure from the outside of the hole to the outside of the hole so that I get good coverage. Clip. And then I want to bend the ends because we have to fit it all in here. So I make it so that's the length of the path and I bend the wire around. So I end up with that. I don't know if you can see, but I hope you can. And then, using the X-Acto knife, I slot it into that little slit that I made. Yeah, there we go. And there we are. That's the first wiring. And I do this following the creative sequence. Okay, so I'll just carry on. This is a gold wire here. Oof, got way too many of these. 
Okay, so the wiring is done, as you can see. 
there's the ends of the wires are all poking out into this hole here. So when I slip the um, clear quartz crystals in there, all of the wires make contact with the uh, sephirotic crystals. Now the wire that I use is 24 gauge and I only deal in what's called dead soft wire. It comes in three classes. Hard, which means um, you can't bend it and have it keep its shape. Uh, Semi-hard, which uh, or semi-soft, whichever, uh, means that you can bend it some, but it's not fully relaxed. And soft is the most relaxed. Um, the gold wire um, is very soft, and you can bend it into whatever shape you want. Silver wire is sort of really, when it's soft, uh, really sort of semi-hard. It doesn't hold a curve or a shape quite as easily. It takes a little bit more work, and uh, the copper is definitely soft. I buy my gold is uh, a 14 karat gold-filled wire. Um, solid 24 karat gold wire is just too bloody expensive for me. So I get the gold filled wire, which is expensive in and of itself, and the sterling silver wire and basic copper wire. I buy the gold and the silver wire online uh, from a company called Bead Corp here in the States. It's the cheapest place and most reliable for getting those wires. The copper wire um, I bought online from uh, some electrical supply, basically. You can get a huge amount of copper wire fairly cheaply. Okay, so the wiring is done. And what I will do next is glue on um, my facing piece of cardboard. And that's a simple gluing process and it will dry enough pretty quickly. Then I will put on the um, piece of chipboard, um, which is the final, final layer. Again, I want to even up the edges, even up the sides, and I just do that. excess glue that wants to come out the sides. Okay, and then put it under pressure again till it dries a little bit more.
Okay. Okay, before I get to doing pass strips, I've got this, it's dried enough, and I'm now gonna put on the surface of card. Now this is for uh, just a little extra space for the, uh, the quartz spheres, and it also provides a very flat, sturdy surface on which I will then glue my gold page with the, uh, the tree on it, okay? So. Okay, now we set that off under pressure again to dry. 